Hi, it's Fook, and today I'm going to give you a quick rundown of one of my favorite tools for modeling and testing different investing ideas, and that is Portfolio Visualizer. And you can get there by typing in PortfolioVisualizer.com into your browser bar. There is a paid subscription service uh, if you want to use some of the more advanced features, but uh, you get a lot of great tools uh, with just the free, uh, with the free account. So let's dive right into it. So when you go to Portfolio Visualizer, it's divided into the six sections, the, uh, the tools, and there's quite a bit here. And over time, I'm gonna go into each one of the tool in more detail. But for now, I'm only concentrating on a few that I think you'll find useful, it's just to give a quick overview of uh, what it's capable of. So let's dive right into it. Uh, the first section I'm gonna go over is the back test portfolio, which is located right here. And specifically, I'm going to look at the asset allocation back test and the portfolio back test. And then I'm going to jump over to the asset analytics and take a look at asset correlation, which is right here. And then lastly, I'll go down to Monte Carlo simulation and uh, run through that as well. All right. So first off, the portfolio asset class allocation. This is uh, going to go back to 1972. It's constrained by the types of assets that you're going to select. But uh, I have some pre-filled in here. And if you want to uh, select other asset classes, you can. But basically, just drop, click the drop-down list here. And you can scroll down the list of what's available. So you have equities for the US divided into different uh, large, mid, and small cap, uh, growth versus value, and so on. You have international equities. You have fixed income and then you have alternative assets. Okay? Once you select an asset, you can go ahead and fill in on the uh, columns here for portfolio one, two, and three, the different allocation and percentage that you wanna put here. So I pre-filled this in, um, and we can go ahead and just see what the result looks like. One, point, one thing I wanna point out is that you don't have to use whole numbers. So if you want to use 59.5%, uh, and then make this 40.5%. Uh, as long as it adds up to 100, you're fine. So I'll leave it at 59.5 and 40.5. Uh, that's close enough to 60.40. But once you fill in your allocation here, you can go ahead and click Analyze Portfolio and it'll give you the result. So the first thing you'll see is that uh, the portfolio makeup. Okay, so we have 100% US market, a 60-40 portfolio, and then essentially uh, something that has a little bit more international in it, but uh, also kind of build off on the 60-40 portfolio. All right, we can scroll down here and see the result. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that uh, before you jump down here, take a look at this time frame right here. Okay, so this is going back not to 1972 but 1999 in January, and the reason for that is that the data is constrained by this global bonds uh, U.S. hedge asset class. So if you were to take that out, it will go back a bit further, but that's the constraint. It's depending on the data for the individual asset classes that you have. But uh, with that out of the way, we can take a look at this. But basically what this is saying is that since 1999, if you had it in 100% US stock, you can expect a compounded growth rate of 8.16%. And then here's the max drawdown for this portfolio, almost 51%. So. Uh, Pretty risky, but uh, also the highest compounded re returns. When you jump down to the 60-40 portfolio, obviously you're giving up some of that uh, growth, but uh, your standard deviation has dropped significantly as well as your max drawdown. Okay? You may wanna know if adding international exposure is going to improve returns compared to say a 60-40, and it does very slightly. You jump from 7.14 compounded growth rate to 7.3, but um, the standard deviation went up slightly and your max drawdown went up as well. So that's portfolio asset class uh, back test. The related option to that is the portfolio asset allocation. So the difference here is that this Portfolio asset allocation is testing individual investments. You can put in ticker symbols, either stocks, mutual funds, or ETF. So to demonstrate, what I've done here is uh, select VTI for the total stock market for portfolio one, so that's 100%. And then I have VBR, which is small cap, BND, total US bonds, and then VXUS, which is uh, XUS global stocks. 
I purposely left Portfolio 3 blank because I want to demonstrate another feature of Port Portfolio Visualizer. If you were to click on this little down arrow right here, you have some pre-built what they call lazy portfolios. So what you'll find is that uh, there's the BOGO Head 3 and 4 fund portfolio. You have the Yale Endowment portfolio from David Swenson. You have Harry Brown's permanent portfolio. You have uh, Ray Dalio all season, so on and so forth. If you want to compare one of these pre-built portfolios to something that you set up manually, you can just click on this. So let's say we're interested in the Ray Dalio all season. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And you'll notice that it added in these asset classes here, or I should say these assets, because we're in the uh, portfolio back test. And uh, it fills in the appropriate uh, allocation to them. So as before, we'll click on Analyze Portfolio. And you can see the allocation on the top. But what will be interesting is the portfolio return. So this is based on a fixed initial balance without adding any funds. And you can see that once again, the uh, total stock market is the one that does the best. Next by the kind of diversified portfolio. And lastly by Ray Dalio all season portfolio. What you'll notice here is that while this return is uh, relatively low compared to the other two portfolios, look at this max drawdown. Okay, You go from about 21% for US total stock market down to less than seven. That's pretty good. And one of the reasons why people invest in the all, uh, all season portfolio. Granted, this result is constrained from January 2012 so it's about nine years old. And the reason for that is this uh, Vanguard Total International Stock XUS ticker. Okay? And it even gives you a little example here that if you were to switch to this mutual fund instead, you can extend the uh, back testing back a little bit. So we'll go ahead and take that suggestion. And then the other modification I'm gonna do is that uh, instead of just starting with one amount and not adding anything, we're going to go and change the cash flow by contributing a fixed amount. So let's say that you were uh, putting this into an IRA, whether it's Roth or traditional, it doesn't really matter, but you're going to max out the $6,000 a year. That works out to be $500 a month. So for the contribution frequency, we're going to change that to monthly. And then we'll reanalyze the portfolio and see what happens. This time we were able to extend the back test back to uh, 2007. And again, we get the same message. This has not been strained by the total bond market. We can go ahead and replace that with this mutual fund and see if that improves the back test period. So I'll change BND to the mutual fund. And now it's going back to 2006. Okay, um, That's halfway decent, so we'll leave it there. But let's go ahead and take a look at the result. This time, the all-weather uh, or all-season portfolio is doing a, a little bit better than the diversified portfolio, but they're neck and neck, 8%. And again, the total stock market is still, is still doing better. But because we extended the back test period uh, to 15 years instead of 9, uh, it's not as pronounced. But once again, the uh, all-seasons uh, Ray Dalio's portfolio is uh, coming in with the better drawdown for sure. If you're interested, you can go and look at uh, things like drawdowns and uh, other, re other re reports on the analysis here just to see how it performs. So for example, if you want to see what it looks like on the drawdowns, you can see that Portfolio 3, which is Ray Dalio's portfolio, uh, had very low drawdowns and recovered quite quickly. Okay. You can also check rolling returns over you know several uh, rolling periods. So over 15 years, if you were looking at, say, a three-year rolling period, you can see how the different portfolio perform. So that's portfolio asset allocation back test. So the difference is that one, one you're using an asset class and the other you're using actual investment. The next thing that I like to look at usually is the asset correlation. Uh, here I pre-filled it with uh, a couple of ticker symbols. So I'm going to leave everything else the same and click on view correlation. What this gives me is a correlation matrix for the assets that I've selected. And the way you read it is that uh, you have two axes, the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. 
So here it's saying that VTI, total stock market, is 100% correlated with ex itself. Okay, so 1.0 is 100%. When you compare it to the S&P 500, which is VOO, VU, it's also 100% correlated. So total stock market and S&P 500 are very, very highly correlated. For all intents and purposes over the last 10 years, it was 100% uh, correlated. When you compare it to, say, the VXUS, which is the global stocks outside of the US, uh, you see that this correlation drops down to 87, 86%, depending on which asset you're comparing it to. Okay? So you're getting a little bit more diversification with global stocks, but uh, I would argue that 87% is still pretty, pretty correlated, uh, so on and so forth. Okay? Bonds have zero correlation with stocks over the last 10 years, and long-term bonds are actually negatively correlated with the total stock market. So this is a useful tool if you're trying to build a risk parity style portfolio. Um, so I usually use this quite a bit uh, when I'm building a certain portfolio and then testing it with the other tools. Lastly, we'll look at the Monte Carlo simulation. So what this allows you to do is to test uh, different situations, whether it's a drawdown or a contribution. So in this case, what I'm doing is uh, I'm testing a drawdown. So I'm saying that the initial amount is $3 million. So let's say that you were going to diligently save over you know, a 40-year working career, and you've managed to build a nest egg of $3 million by the time you reach 65. And you like to take out 4% of that using Bill Bengen's 4% uh, rule of thumb. That works out to be 120,000 a year. So here I'm putting 120,000. The withdrawal frequency is fr uh, annually. And if you're retiring at 65, I'm gonna simulate the retirement at 30 years. But of course, you can change this as you wish. The rest of this I'll leave alone. I'll come back and play around with this uh, and show you what else it can do. But then we go down here and you can see that you can select different asset classes and uh, run the simulation. I'm leaving it at 60-40 because uh, for a retiree, they're probably gonna be using a conservative allocation. And if you read the uh, study from Bill Bengen, it suggests that you should be at least 50% in stocks uh, in order to utilize the 4% rule. Now, just as with the other tool, if you wanted to use a pre-built portfolio, you can select them from this dropdown right here but uh, I'm not gonna do that, okay? I'm just gonna run this simulation and see our result. So in a 60-40 portfolio, withdrawing 4% over 30 years, we can see that in all scenarios, uh, we're gonna find success, okay? This is the median scenario, the 50 percentile, which is where you can expect to land most of the time. If you do exceptionally well, you may be up at the 90 percentile, and uh, if you're going to hit you know, some bad markets, you may be down here at the 10 percentile. But over 30 years, withdrawing 4%, there are no scenarios where you're going to end up uh, out of money, which is kind of the goal. You can also look at the safe withdrawal rate that's suggested based on the simulation on this line here for the different percentile. So on a 60-40 percentile using historical returns, uh, the simulation is saying that you can withdraw as high as 7.5% you know, for half of the scenario and be okay. okay. On a perpetual withdrawal rate, it's uh, 6. So if you recall the update to Bill Bengen's 4% study, he came back and basically said that he thinks you can actually go a little bit higher, and that's what it's showing here. As we scroll down here, we see how the different percentile uh, does over the 30 years. And here is portfolio success. Okay. Now, before I move on on what else you can do with Monte Carlo, let me show you something you can do that uh, is pretty helpful. So down here, you can see something called sequence of return risk. Now, some of you may know what this is, but it basically says that if you're in a drawdown scenario, so you're entering retirement, what really matters the most is not necessarily your asset allocation, although that is important, but it's the sequence of returns that you're gonna face as you enter retirement. So if you start retirement and start to withdraw from your nest egg and run into, let's say, three bad years of returns, that's gonna have a much bigger effect 
on your success than uh, anything else. So to simulate that, we can select three bad years of return by going with three worst year first, rerunning the scenario, and seeing what happens. So when we do that, what we actually see is that the 10 percentile failed. Okay, If you were to face a three year uh, of bad returns at the start of your retirement. But the rest of it, you're going to do okay. Right? And you can see that the uh, portfolio success rate drops accordingly to 86%, whereas before it was almost 100%. It was not quite 100%, but it was pretty close. When we go and actually look at the 10 percentile, you can see that 10 percentile will last you, you know, 25 years in this simulation. Not quite the full 30, so it failed, but uh, it still lasts you 25, 25 years. Now, if you think that the three worst years is a pretty uh, realistic sequence of return risk, you can stop here. And if you're comfortable with your nest egg and your withdrawal rates and your allocation, uh, you're good to go. If you are a little bit more cautious and want to see what happens if you're going to face five worst years first, you can select that as well, rerun the simulation, and uh, see what happens. And this reduces uh, your success rate even further. So even the 25th percentile is now failing if you face five bad years uh, upon start of withdrawal. All right, let's go in here and see what, what else we can do with this tool. So let's flip this around. Let's say that you're a young worker, you're uh, 25 years old, and you have just $1,000 saved up. But uh, you got a good job, and you're going to be participating in your company's 401k, and you're gonna contribute, let's say $1,000 a month. That's not gonna max you out, but uh, it's you know reasonable contribution, 12,000 a year, and we'll adjust it for uh, inflation, and uh, we're gonna say that this is now a monthly contribution because it's uh, a lower amount. And what we're gonna do is we're going to simulate uh, you know, a 40 year working career. So you're 25, you're gonna retire at 65. Okay. And you won't start with a 60-40 portfolio because this is a bit aggressive, but uh, you're not comfortable going with uh, you know, 100% stock. So let's say that you go uh, you know, 85-15 to start. You may even go 90-10, depending on how aggressive you wanna be. But let's just say that you start with this 85-15 allocation and uh, you have a thousand to start and you're gonna add a thousand a month over the next 40 years. So this is what's gonna happen. Uh, at the 50th percentile, you're gonna end up with a nominal balance of 18 and a half million and in real dollars, it's gonna be 6.7 million. That's a pretty good nest egg. Now, if you think that you need less than this, it basically means that if you were to follow this, you don't actually need to save for 40 years. So let's say that you're looking to retire early, maybe in 25 years, and you're looking to get a nest egg of, I don't know, maybe two and a half million dollars, at least to start, okay? We can change the simulation period to 25 and click run simulation and look at the 50 percentile and see where you're at. And this is basically saying that if you do this plan with this allocation for 25 years, you end up most likely at the 50 percentile with $3 million uh, nest egg. That's a nominal nest egg, and you may say that that's enough for you to retire early. So if you were doing this at 25 for another 25 years, you can get out at 50 years old, much earlier than the uh, normal population would look to retire. Anyways, this is a very brief rundown of some of the uh, more common tools within Portfolio Visualizer. Uh, like I said, I'll do more specific individual uh, walkthroughs of some of these tools in the future, but I'm hoping that uh, you put this to use. It's completely free, and like I said, if you want to sign up, you can, but uh, there's a lot of things you can do with the tool that you don't have to pay for, and I find that it's a great tool to use for running different scenarios and testing ideas and just learning more about the market and all of that. All right. Good luck and uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video and come back for more. See ya.